The following video will guide Hereford and Worcester fire crews through the process of performing CPR on a patient during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before the officer in charge completes their 360 recce, it is important that they don the correct PPE in case they make contact with a COVID-19 positive patient. Here you see them donning two pairs of disposable nitrile gloves, which will provide them with extra safety, and it also makes the decontamination stage easier. The FFP3 mask can be donned, which must be securely fitted to the face using both elastic fastening straps and pinched on the bridge of the nose so that a good seal is created. Finally, the fire helmet is donned and the officer in charge can decide whether any other items are needed. For example, a gas monitor, if carbon monoxide is a possible alternative cause for the patient's collapse. Please note, should contact be made with a casualty, the full visor must be put down to provide protection to the nose and face. On arrival at the incident, it is important that the officer in charge does a full 360 reiki around the property, gaining information by looking through windows and trying the doors to see if they can be easily opened. At this incident, once the casualty had been located by the officer in charge, he instructed the crews to don the appropriate PPE and to bring any needed equipment such as the trauma bag and defibrillator to the rear of the property. The crew member who will be making contact with the patient is now donning a disposable apron and a respirator mask with the disposable filter attached. Ensure the mask is fitted securely with all straps tightened. The crew member will then don two pairs of disposable nitrile gloves and their firefighter helmet. Should a respirator mask with filter not be available when dealing with patients requiring CPR, an FFP3 mask can be used and is adequate protection for the wearer of this task. It is important to keep any contact with the patient to a minimum. The officer in charge can consider instructing the second crew member to assist should there be a delayed response time from the ambulance service. When the casualty carrier approaches the casualty, they must always check the casualty's response by calling out to them and by applying gentle pressure to them for a pain stimulus. If no response to voice or pain is noted, then a carotid pulse can be checked on the patient's neck. It is important to remember to leave any equipment that is not needed at least two meters away from the patient. During your patient assessment, you must not listen or feel for a patient's breathing, nor put your head in close proximity to the patient's airway. If no pulse is felt, or signs of life notice, the defibrillator pads can be placed onto the patient's chest as per normal guidance. Either a surgical mask, damp tea towel, damp blue torque roll, or a tight-fitting high-flow oxygen mask with 15 liters per minute flow rate can then be placed over the patient's nose and mouth. This is to reduce the risk of causing an aerosol-enriched environment from particles from the patient's lungs. Opening doors and windows will further help the dilution of these potential aerosols. The airway can be managed by simply tilting the head back. It is important to note that a BVM should not be used, nor should any airway adjuncts. All contact with the patient's face should be kept to a minimum. Compression-only CPR can now commence. Ignore any prompts from the defibrillator that instructs you to breathe for the patient. 
pause CPR when the defibrillator instructs you not to touch the patient whilst it analyzes the patient's heart rhythm. If you are instructed to deliver a shock, ensure you and any oxygen cylinders are away from the patient before delivering a shock. Once you have handed over to the oncoming ambulance crew, consideration must be given to decontamination and safe disposal of any clinical waste. The casualty care should be sprayed using a 1 to 10 ratio of chem gene spray, ensuring the underneath of the fire boots and knee pad areas are not missed. Following this, remove the first pair of gloves and place them in the clinical waste bag. Break the disposable apron's neck strap and fold the apron down. You can then snap the apron's remaining retaining strap behind your back and fold it in half again. Now the apron is detached. Carefully fold it and place it in the clinical waste bag. During the contamination process, it is important to bag any fire leggings or tunics in a red soluble bag, which should be located in a second clear bag. This can be sent off to Bristol Uniform, marked for decontamination, and clearly marked as potential COVID exposure. Any items such as fire helmets, boots, ancillary equipment that includes items such as the AED should be decontaminated to the best of the crew's ability on site. Items can then be bagged in a second clear bag and fully decontaminated back on station if needed. When taking the respirator off, firstly remove the filter and place it in a clinical waste bag. Remove your last pair of nitro gloves and use hand sanitizer to clean your hands. Remove the respirator whilst holding it on the sides. Try to avoid touching the visor. Place the respirator into the clear plastic bag for decontamination. Finish by thoroughly sanitizing your hands again and wash your hands with soap and water at the earliest opportunity. Thank you for watching this training center video. Should you need any further advice, please refer to the current COVID-19 guidance that can be found on the Service SharePoint site.